We're looking good. You know, it's uh, Memorial Day weekend. It's a long <laughs> Memorial Day weekend. And so show has not started yet. <sighs> okay. All right. Hi. Thank you all for showing up. This is a pledge episode. I'm asking you for money. Go to davidfeldmanshow.com, hit the donate menu. We accept all major credit cards. Please go to davidfeldmanshow.com, hit the donate button. We accept all major credit cards. America's Better Business Bureau says charities here in America should only spend 30% of their income on fundraising. Think about that for a second. Here in America, the industry standard for charitable giving is that 30 cents on every dollar that you donate should be spent on getting you to donate more money. Think about that. And other places, it's higher than 30%. When you donate to a museum, NPR, your local NPR station, or the PBS, or your local PBS station, 30%, at least 30% is skimmed right off the top in order to come up with new and imaginative ways to get you to donate even more money. That doesn't include the salaries they pay the charlatans running these so-called non Profits. I'm going to read you a list of salaries later on, and I promise you, after you hear these numbers, you will never donate to these, these, these radio stations like NPR or PBS ever again. Charities like the PBS, NPR, colleges, universities, both public, private, museums, they all pay their CEOs anywhere between $700,000 to $3 million a year. Nonprofit hospitals, their CEOs bring in $15 million a year. And these are all nonprofit 501c3s. They take tax dollars. They don't pay taxes. They take tax dollars. They take your tax dollars. And then they ask you to donate. This is a pledge episode. Go to davidfeldmanshow.com, hit the donate button. I accept all major credit cards. Let me address NPR, National Public Radio, Minnesota Public Radio, and the PBS because they have the audacity to ask you for money, money that should be given to me instead. Go to davidfeldmanshow.com. I am so dead inside right now. Uh, in order for me to do this, I, you, I have to tap into a sense memory. Uh, I'm disassociating. I'm, you know, here's why. Let me try to sell you on why you should become a monthly subscriber. Here's why you should become a monthly subscriber to The David Feldman Show. I offer absolutely zero premium content. That's why. You should become a monthly subscriber because you get absolutely nothing in return. This show is free whether you donate or not. And that's why you should donate. That's why you should go to davidfeldmanshow.com right now, hit the donate menu. I accept all major credit cards. And if you donate, if you give me $5, $500, $5,000, you get absolutely nothing in return. Uh, no t-shirts, no coffee mugs. I print out a, a, a spreadsheet uh, at the end of the month. Maybe I'll see your name and I'll think to myself, oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. So if you donate, uh, I will think to myself, oh, that's nice. That's it. That's all you get. Maybe I'll email a, a thank you note if I have time, but consider yourself lucky if you get one of those. <laughs> I yeah, wanted. you get nothing, folks. Nothing. I don't have time to correspond with people just because they sent me money. What do you think I am, a whore? I got a show to produce. You, you sicken me. You know what? Screw it. Keep your, keep your money. I'm sick of the aggravation. Look, in all seriousness, 
give me money. Just go to davidfeldmanshow.com, hit the donate menu, and give me money. No premium content. Everything we produce here is free. It's free for everybody, especially for people who don't have the money to donate. I do the show for the people who don't have money to, to, to donate. I can't stand the people who have money to donate. <laughs> I can't stand the people who donate to my, my show, you rich pricks. Go to do, I do the show for the people who have no money to donate. And that's why nobody gets anything special just because they donate, you arrogant prick. Here's the truth. You should, you should donate because you delight in the knowledge that I will see your name, how much you donated, and I will feel guilty. I hate myself. I, you notice I don't do these pledge episodes as often as I, uh, as I should, because uh, deep down inside, I don't think I deserve any money. I don't. Honestly, if I rub you the wrong way and I'm abrasive and you want to hurt me, donate money to this show. It, it, it really does rip me apart. It really does. When I get a donation, the first thing I think is I don't deserve this. So if you want to give me sleepless nights, donate money. Donate money. Because then I'll be, if you donate money, I'll be thinking, why are they giving money to me when there's so many other <laughs> worthier causes? I don't deserve this. I should just live on bread, stale bread and water. Seriously, the show is free to everyone. Uh, and I would never gate off certain segments of the show. I really would like to do pledge episodes this way, where I just turn on the people I'm supposed to ask for money. I think this could be really funny. Anyway, there, there, there's no premium content. Everything on my website is free. We go back 13 years. If you're willing to go through 13 years of these shows, have at it, let me know what you found. Uh, Dan likes to go through the archives. The archives are and will remain completely free. And that's because knowledge should be free. And entertainment should be what people can afford to pay. This is the honor system. If you had a good year and you listened to this show, give me money. And if you had a bad year financially, hey, what's a little more debt? <laughs> Put it on your credit. <laughs> I mean, really, you, <laughs> it's just a little more debt. You're not going to notice it. In all seriousness, we do about 14 hours worth of podcasting a week. And then there are other things we do. So, you know, I think I'm worth what a, a, a meal. I think the show is worth what you would pay for one meal each month. If you're poor, pay me what it costs you to eat one meal each month. If you're rich, pay me what it costs you to eat one meal each month. Out, like if you, you know, when you go out, pay me that. That's all I'm asking. Think of me as a meal. I already make you sick to your stomach, so you might as well. Forego one meal, forego one meal at a, a fast food restaurant or a fancy restaurant one day a month, stay home, give me the money you would have spent on that meal dining out, and then listen to my podcast while cooking your own meal. I think that's a good plan. This show is better than anything you'll ever hear on NPR or watch on the PBS because we are beholden to nobody but the listeners. Now, I made a decision a few years back doing this show. I decided I will never, ever read a commercial for Warby Parker eyeglasses ever again. I believe there's a way to grow this show by asking listeners to donate what they can. I I'm asking, what if I produce a show that's so good people would pay for it, even though it's completely free? That is my business model. My Uncle Marty keeps calling me from Canada. What's your business model? What's your bi My business model is 
give me your money. That's my business model. I won't do premium content. Uh, I know people don't have money. So I expect the people who do have money to step up, chip in for the people who are struggling. And if I may be so bold, I believe this show actually saves you money because it encourages you to reject everything, to stop wasting time, and most importantly, money. This show helps you reject all the, the societal devices to steal your money. And, and you listen to the show and you learn to stop wasting money on bad food, bad politicians, bad movies, bad ideas, and toys that end up not working. Think of all the money you save listening to this show instead of spending that money on a really good time. <laughs> Think of all the money you're saving being miserable with me. Yeah, I know it's not Springsteen on Broadway, but it's also not $5,000 a seat. I'm not just cheap, I'm free. I, you know, uh, I'm the guy in the back seat of the Subaru you can take advantage of because I just want to be liked. <laughs> That's who I am. But you know what? Sometimes, you people have to stop treating me like a slut. Sometimes I want to be paid for what I put out. And again, I know people are strapped, but if you're willing to spend money on a Big Mac, but not on me, go F yourself. Seriously. <laughs> I mean that. If you're going to go eat a Big Mac, instead of giving me, does a Big Mac cost? Five bucks? Seven bucks? I'm better for you than a Big Mac or some, you know, with, I'm better than like, think about it, Big Mac, large fries and a Coke. You're going to spend money on that instead of giving that to me each month, instead of buying a Big Mac, large fries and a Coke, give me the money instead and treat yourself to beans and rice. You'll feel and look better and you'll smell better. Uh, look, let me talk about money because I'm very comfortable talking about this. Money should be spent on books, magazines, documentaries, investigative journalists, politicians, and podcasters who provide you with the nutrients you need to think better. This show is worth more than a Big Mac. And that's why I need you to go to davidfeldmanshow.com. Uh, I accept all major credit cards. If everyone who listens right now, anybody in earshot, listening right now, donated $5, $15 a month. Seriously, we'd have enough money to take this show to another level because we are growing. The, the newsletter is amazing. Office hours is amazing. People are learning. They're meeting new friends. And the more money, in all seriousness, the more money that comes in, the more money I can pour into this show and the community. And you know that. You know that. Uh, it costs me money. I go out of pocket here. Uh, I know it's hard for people to believe, but I have some expensive software. I know it doesn't look that way. Uh, I'd like to buy some new cameras, computers. I would love to take this show to Washington, D.C. Uh, we're paying people now an embarrassingly low salary because I make an embarrassingly small amount of money doing this but I can't keep going out of pocket. I can't, as they say, deficit finance. Uh, I'm tired of taking writing jobs that crush my soul in order to bankroll this. I would like this to be my full-time job. And if it were, it would be even better. And the show's pretty effing good. It is. And do not give to NPR. Even, you know, even if you don't give to me, do not give it to NPR. Do not give to the PBS. Do not donate to NPR or the PBS. When they're not asking you for donations, they're charging you for their products. In order for me to watch shows that I miss on WNET here in New York, the PBS station, I have to sign up for like some passport, like $10 a month. And not only are they charging for the product, 
they're courting corporate underwriters and advertisers and taking tax dollars. Look, 100%, 100% of what you donate to this show goes into the show. That's why you're not getting a gift. I don't feel like I should have to induce you into donating. I, I think the, the show is so good that you don't need a Lawrence Welk box set in, you know, in return for your donation. By the way, I'm serious. That's uh, WNET is my local PBS affiliate here in New York. And the other night they were asking for money and they said, if you donate, they would give you a Lawrence Welk box set. I would donate to WNET not to send me a Lawrence Welk box set. I would donate to WNET to burn those Lawrence Welk box sets. This is the education channel, WNET, PBS. Neil Shapiro, the CEO of WNET, he makes more than a million dollars a year. Go look it up. Go to Charity Navigator or ProPublica. They have a database now. Go find out about Neil Shapiro, the CEO of WNET. A low, not, not, we're not talking about PBS National, a local affiliate. Million a year. That's where your money goes when you donate to the PBS, paying Neil Shapiro, which rhymes with zero, several zeros a year. He gets several zeros a year. And how much original programming does WNET produce locally? Pretty much zero. My overhead does not include fundraising. Like I said, I'm not interested in sending you a coffee mug. You don't need a coffee mug or a refrigerator magnet. I don't want to send you that crap in the mail. A few years back, I was selling those Chris Christie shower curtains. Some of you bought them and uh, I felt guilty. I felt horrible that some of you were buying my Chris Christie shower curtains. Uh, I felt guilty because nobody is really going to hang a Chris Christie shower curtain in their bathroom. And if they do, they need to be placed in a psychiatric hold for 36 hours. Chris Christie shower curtains are a waste, not just of your money, your time, my time. It's bad for the planet. The shower curtains are made of fossil fuels. It's plastic. I can't ask you to buy that crap. I can't say, you know, if you donate, I'll send you a Chris Christie shower curtain. I can't offer you worthless crap that only increases your carbon footprint. So if you listen to this show, send me $5, send $500, send $5 million, I mean, send 50 million, 50 million. If, if I had $50 million, I would probably buy the National Enquirer just, and just spend the rest of my life destroying my enemies. Where was I? Oh yeah, give me money. I, I need money. I'm buying software bandwidth. We're paying people, not a lot. Uh, we're buying reading material. It's all legitimate expenses that go right into what you're hearing. And uh, plus, we don't hire anybody here to coax more money out of you. So if you donate, like I said, you get nothing from me other than an email thanking you if I get around to it. Okay. Uh, if you donate, I, I plan to send you a thank you note, unless I lose interest mid thank you note, no gifts. This show is your gift. That's why a donation to the David Feldman show gives you more bang for your buck than NPR or PBS. If you listen to NPR, PBS, they constantly ask you for money and I'm going to make you really angry. I'm going to read you some salaries. You're going to be foaming at the mouth. Uh, they pay their on-air talent hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions a year. Uh, the CEOs of like NPR, they, they make close to a million a year. They ask you for money and then they run advertising on their shows while claiming that they are commercial free. Then they take money from corporate underrides and they get tax dollars and grants. What about David Rubenstein, you ask? It's been nearly 10 minutes and you haven't mentioned 
war profiteer David Rubenstein. You're right. David Rubenstein, the single largest war profiteer in the world, he's chairman of the Carlisle Group. Did you know he has his own show on the PBS? War profiteer David Rubenstein, who gave out the Mark Twain Prize to Jon Stewart on the PBS. He's also president of the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, but we're talking about NPR and PBS. So David Rubenstein, war profiteer, David Rubenstein, one of the worst human beings of the 21st century. He has his own show on the PBS. Why? Why does, why? Why does David Rubenstein have his own show? Because he donates his blood money to the PBS. Ken Burns has taken $10 million that we know of from David Rubenstein. David Rubenstein cries when he watches Ken Burns' Civil War because of all the money he could have made off of it back then. He donated at least $5 million to his local PBS affiliate in Washington, D.C., David Rubenstein. And somehow, miraculously, this lump of dead fish David Rubenstein gets his own series on the PBS. David Rubenstein, who has the personality of a genital wart, somehow gets his own show on the PBS. The P you know what? Give me $500 million. I'm not going to go away, but give me $500 million. <sighs> Do you realize how degrading this is for me to ask you deadbeats for money? I am David Merconium Feldman. Do you know who I was in the 90s? You owe me. Pay up, you freeloaders. This Hit the donate button. I accept all major credit cards. Again, I'm not sending you anything in return. Seriously, you owe me. Uh, you owe me. Who told you about index funds? I did. Okay, I'm going to read you some salaries. Jarl Moen, he's the N NPR president and CEO, $600,000 a year. Stephen A. Inskeep, host of Morning Edition, $500,000 a year. Let's just read copy. Peter D. Sagel, host, $500,000 a year. Let me give you some good ones. Robert J. Schmitz, he's the international correspondent stationed in Berlin for NPR, $357,000 a year. How often do you hear Robert J. Schmitz, international correspondent in Berlin on NPR? How did he get that gig? $357,000 a year. International correspondent in London, Frank D. Langfit, $349,000, $350,000. That's, uh, that's NPR. Uh, let me give you some other ones. Minnesota Public Radio, Kai Risdale, $525,000 a year. He hosts, I think, a money show, right? David Brancaccio, I think he hosts a money show, $500,000 a year. KQED in San Francisco pays their president and CEO, John Boland, $1 million a year. So don't give them money. Go to davidfeldmanshow.com. I accept all major credit cards. Or if anyone listening works for NPR or the PBS and thinks I might be a good fit, Give me a call. Uh, like I said, today is a pledge episode. I hope this is the last one I ever have to do, or, I, or at least for the summer. Uh, or this, what is it? Oh, it's still spring? Jesus. I hope this is the last one I have to do for a while. Today is a pledge episode. I've got to pay the bills around here, so I'm asking you to go to davidfeldmanshow.com, hit the donate button, and give what you can. Uh, like I said, this show is getting a little more expensive to produce, so I can use 
all the help you have to offer. Go to davidfeldmanshow.com. Hit the donate button. Uh, I accept all major credit cards. Uh, I guess that's it. I've, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. I have some more notes, but that's it. I've prostituted myself enough. I need a shower. I feel so dirty. I've been told that I should ask for super chats. So uh, this is a little uncomfortable for me to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to ask people who are watching us on YouTube uh, to offer at the, zoo, uh, the, the YouTube. That didn't sound good. Uh, Dan, do we have any super chats? No. Okay. Yes, well, sir. If you go, if you go into the one sheet, uh, Invisible Ninja has listed them. Oh, we have we have super chat. Oh, yes. Great. Well, thank you, sir. That's good. This is exciting. Oh my God, that's amazing. Uh, so we have Midi Doctors uh, <laughs> super chat from Great Britain. He writes, "I'm a freeloader from way back." Thank you. AJ, wow, this is fantastic. AJ, join us. Thank you for, you didn't have a comment. I, 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 I'm supposed to read how much they gave. I don't want to embarrass people. I'm uncomfortable reading. I mean, AJ gave me $20 million and uh, I don't think people want to know that AJ just gave me $20 million and he lives at 1313 Mockingbird Lane in New Rochelle, New York City, and he doesn't want that kind of, he doesn't want people knowing where he lives. Uh, Jules T. Thank you, Jules T. And Tinaloo Mac. Wow. Thank you all for, uh... oh, we have more. Hang on. Alex uh, Rosenbaum. Hello, David. Do pity donations count? Yeah. How do you think I lost my virginity? If so, here is one. Thanks for intending to put out a great show <laughs> your effort is inspiring yes i intend to put on a great show thank you to the mods by the way in this uh, the youtube chat room they keep the, the conversation going and we they get rid of all the there's a lot of spammers you know uh, trying to sell sex dolls and and they, so they keep my uncle Marty out of there. Thank you to Autumn Leaves, M. Toussaint, Bob Carmati, Midi Doctors, S. Scout is taken, Coking on Ashes, or Choking on Ashes. I thought it was Choking on Ashes. Lexi four four four, Andy that would be Andy Brown, Sarah Bush. Dan Frankenberger and the Invisible Ninja. Thank you to everybody uh, for the super chats. And wow, that was productive. I hope we don't have to do too many of those, Dan. It, these things we have to walk the streets. It just feels uh, a little dirty. 